Welcome back. My name is Jim Caseman. <clears throat> We're talking about how to be led by the Spirit. And of course, I decided to use my life story, my failures, successes, so you could learn from both either way and understand clearly the difference between spirit, soul, and body. And uh, we're, we're going on it. All right, now, you'd ask, uh, some people ask, how did AFCM get started? Well, we left, uh, uh, we left uh, the church in Redwood Falls, and we're just believing God and the traveling ministry was starting. Now, in those years, it was, it was, uh, it was, everybody wanted a Bible study in their home, it seemed like. There were lots of home Bible studies that's, that I attended. And I literally went seven days a week with meetings, literally. I was on the road constantly. And that's another story. Catch that later, I guess. So, and it was by word of mouth. I never asked for meetings. Brother Hagen, in one of his teachings, he was talking about a pastor that, uh, uh, or a minister, I forget what, what it was, minister, it was a five-fold ministry gift, that would um, call for meetings. He would call ministers. He'd call other churches. And he'd say, God told me, you know, I'm to come to your church. Well, he said, you've got to understand now, pastors, you're the head of the church. Somebody may say, God told me to come to your church, but it may not be God. You're the one that's going to have to pray and decide whether this person's supposed to come in or not. I had a pastor that I know, this group, musical group, whatever, and they, were, they, they called and said, God told us to come to your church. Well, he didn't know. I mean, well, God told him he better come. Well, they came with whatever, you know, a dozen people. I don't know how many people made up that group. And they charged it, and they had all of their hotels, they charged all of their meals and everything, and it about took the, the church was about bankrupt before they were gone, and the church then had to end up paying all these charges and everything. Well, if the pastor would have been had enough if he would have been strong enough in faith, he would have would not he would have, and if he'd have known how to be led by the spirit, he'd have had that inner witness would have said, Don't do it. But you see, pastors get intimidated sometimes when there's minister calls that Probably, you know, like Brother Hagin said, if I call you and tell you that God told me to come to your church, you, if you don't have peace, you need to say no to me. But see, pastors or ministers get intimidated when there's a successful traveling ministry. You know, God told me to come to your church like this is really going to be something. When really, in fact, God didn't want him to come to your church. And so he said, he, he said, so I made up my mind right then and there. <clears throat> I'm not calling anybody for meetings. I haven't up to this point, and I decided I'm not going to. Well, of course, this was while I was in Raymond. And so he said, uh, so um, I decided I would never do that. If I'm to come to the church, I decided that they would invite me. And so <clears throat> I told the Lord that too when I first answered the call. Remember, you know, you open the doors. If you open the doors, I'll walk through them. If they close, I'll pump gas. Well, of course, we ended up having more invites than we had you know, we didn't have enough days in the, in the year to fill them. And so we were blessed that way. But I never invited myself. It was always them inviting me. Now, I actually had a chance. I would happen to be standing close enough to the phone booth when a, it was another minister and I and other ministers in this particular meeting. And it was dismissed and on the way to lunch or what have you. And I actually heard this one minister say, oh, I opened up the phone book and there it opened up to your name. And I feel God's told me to come to your church. <laughs> I thought, wow, what Brother Hagin said in school, I finally got one, a first-hand witness. And I knew a little bit about this minister and I knew that, that she was lying. It didn't just open up, this big, thick book in this big city just flopped open and there's his name. I says, no, I don't, I don't believe this for a second. But she invited herself to the church. Now, whether he accepted or he or she accepted the call, I don't know. And so it's one thing to be manipulated. See, that's manipulation. That's dishonest. And uh, it's just working in the flesh to try to get meetings to meet your need. And so out of fear, you pull all kinds of dumb things. And, of course, you can't expect God to, to honor that. Eventually, it's going to catch up with you. So then we stay in faith. And we make God our source. All right. So then, I didn't, uh, 
I was invited, so I had no sooner left Redwood Falls, and then all of a sudden, all of these, I'd been going to all of these home meetings and, and everywhere, and I no sooner left Redwood Falls, and then a church 50 miles out of Wilmer in Hutchinson wanted to become a church. And then, of course, over here, we have Monticello, another one over there. Then Minneapolis wanted a church. Alexander wanted a church. And so then what happened, I'm ending up pastoring uh, five churches in one Sunday. Then Wilmer, that church is gone. That original church that we went up there with had dissolved. And so we then started another church at, Red, at the Holiday Inn. So here I'm going with all of these wanting to turn into churches. And so then one of the uh, uh, men from um, the very first Bible, very first church I pastored of 12 people, after I was there a year, he and his friend and others, of course, went to Ram. And now he comes back and he helps me. He's my associate pastor. And so... Uh, I would do three, see, there's 50 miles this way, 50 miles that way, 50 miles this way, 60 miles that way, 100 miles that way. And so I would do three churches on a Sunday, and then he'd do two. The next Sunday, he'd do three, I'd do two. And we pastored all of these churches until they were big enough to support a pastor. Now, I never planned on this. This is just how it happened. And so here's a handful of us pastors, and we found ourselves getting together to have fellowship, to help each other, encourage each other, get lawyers to help us to get incorporated in accountants. And we had no idea. We'd have Christmas parties. And we had no idea what was happening until all of a sudden I'm in prayer and hear the Lord I'm thinking about all these churches and stuff. And he said, I've called you to be, you know, an apostle or over these churches. And I said, oh, my God. We don't need the word to get out in, in this religious, you know, everything, this spirit of religion. Just, just, I'm just a pastor. <laughs> you know, I had a little problem with this because I was raised in a church where it was only pastors. They didn't talk about evangelists or teachers or, or apostles or prophets or anything like that. And so, and I believe that, and Brother Hagin said, if somebody, if you have to call yourself a prophet or call yourself an apostle, then probably you're not. <laughs> so let God what's the gifts that are in you everybody will see and they'll know whether you're a pastor whether you're an evangelist or whether you're a teacher whether you're an apostle or whether you're a prophet so i kept quiet i said oh brother because I'd, I'd never had i mean i was uh, i never paid attention to churches that dead denomination i was in i was never part of the church government or anything like that. i knew nothing nothing and uh so here we are and all of a sudden we got these five churches and so us pastors are getting together. And so we decided to call this little group uh, Upper Midwest Faith Ministries. Upper Midwest Faith Ministries. So that was really the origin of AFCM. And so then it just expanded. <laughs> and so here now all of a sudden, we've got people that, used to, that I used to pastor that have gone to Ramah. They've come out. Now they've gone, uh, they were used to be in Wilmer, like my assistant pastor ended up in the West Coast in San Francisco and is still pastoring a large church out there in the Bay Area. And, and, and all of a sudden, God speaks to us, that's another story. <laughs> but we ended up in Tulsa eventually, and we changed, that's where we changed the name to AFCM or the Association of Patriots and Ministries. We based the ministry out of Tulsa, then we moved it from Wilmer to Tulsa, but that's another story. But the point is, that we, we just obeyed God day by day. In other words, he, I would get an invite, I would go, I'd just get peace, and if I didn't have peace, I'd say no, and that's basically how we got started, just being led by the Spirit. And he opened the doors for us just by trusting him, trusting him. I didn't have to go out and try to get Bible studies started. They wanted it, they called. And then out of these Bible studies, all of these churches came. So that's how AFCM got started. All right, so then, and we had to believe God. I always believed God for, I never, well, that's another story. We'll take that in the next session. God bless you. Meanwhile, be blessed in everything you set your hands to do. Amen. <laughs>